Today, we're checking out this. This is the XM2 WE from Endgame Gear. It's a lightweight wireless gaming mouse. Endgame Gear described this mouse as the budget-friendly version of the full-fat XM2 W. The WE in the name stands for Wireless Essential. Does the reduced cost mean reduced performance? Hey guys, I'm Matt and welcome to my full review of this, the XM2 WE mouse from Endgame Gear. This mouse retails for a penny under 80 quid at Overclockers UK and has a decent list of key features like a Pixar PAW3370 sensor, Kale Go optical switches for the main left and right click buttons, a CompX CX53850 controller to handle the 2.4 gig wireless connection, and a 410 milliamp hour battery that's advertised offering up to a week of gameplay from a single charge. And that's all on top of this thing weighing just 63 grams. On paper, this mouse sounds great, but does my real world use tell the same story? And this mouse is available in the black on black version that I've got here for review, and also a white model with black accenting on the side buttons and the scroll wheel. I really like how this black model looks and feels. It's got the same coating found on the XM1 and XM1R mice. It's hard to describe without you being able to feel it. It's very smooth, yet manages to also be quite grippy under the fingertips. As far as the coating goes, it's one of the nicest feeling mice I've ever used. The shape, I feel, is designed for a claw grip which isn't something I usually use, but it has suited my palm style okay too. The mouse flattens out a bit towards the front while being quite bulbous and filling out towards the back. It fills my hand quite nicely. I think the best word to describe this mouse is simplicity, or as the name suggests, essential. It doesn't try and do everything, but instead I feel that Endgame Gear are focused on delivering where it matters. There are only five buttons on the top of the mouse, the standard left click, right click and mouse wheel and then the side buttons. The buttons are all also finished in that same black coating that's found everywhere else and the mouse wheel has got a grippy textured rubber running around the outside of it like most mouse wheels. I really like the size and positioning of the side buttons, that's one thing that jumped out at me. They sit just above my thumb and they protrude just enough to make them easy to hit when flapping under pressure in an FPS game. The bottom of the mouse houses two buttons, one for changing the DPI setting and one for turning the XM2WE on and off. The skates or glides or feet or whatever you want to call them are huge slabs of PTFE and are really smooth. The overall weight of this mouse, as I mentioned at the start of the video, is 63 grams, so it definitely falls in that lightweight category. It's not the lightest mouse you can get, but at 63 grams, it's hardly noticeable when you use it. Included in the box with the mouse, you also get a USB-A to USB-C adapter and a 1.8 meter USB cable for charging and for wired use, which has got a really neat design feature. The USB Type-C end that connects to the mouse is ever so slightly angled, meaning that when the time comes that you have to charge the mouse and you want to use it wired, and it's connected to that cable, the cable is held ever so slightly off the desk, which just leads to a smoother experience and less cable snagging. This little touch, I think, shows that Endgame Gear have really put some thought into the user experience with this mouse. Now, like I've mentioned in my previous reviews, Lightweight mice can sometimes come with lightweight build quality, but thankfully that's not the case with the XN2WE. It feels solid all around and the side buttons, an area which usually reveals any corner cutting by manufacturers, feel excellent. Thanks in part to the Kale GM 2.0 switches sitting underneath them. All of the buttons have a very satisfying and tactile click to them and the scroll wheel stepping feels quite sturdy and robust when you, you scroll it backwards and forwards. That wheel does have a very, very minimal amount of sideways play, but it's nothing major and it doesn't concern me at all. I just had to mention it. The body of the XM2WE feels really solid for such a lightweight mouse. There are no creaks or flex when I squeeze it. So I've got no worries about the structural integrity of the body at all. Just don't rage quit and lob it across the room and you'll be fine. 
With this being a wireless mouse, obviously there will come a time when you need to charge it using the included USB cable. It's 1.8 meters in length and it's fully soft weave braided. And Game Gear call it a flex cable, and I agree, it is very flexible and the braid isn't too stiff. And that angled connector that I mentioned earlier is just genius. Here's a quick sound test so you can hear the buttons in action. This mouse is impressing me so far. It's got an understated, kind of mature design, and the build quality is really good. Now, the XM2WE, again, WE stands for Wireless Essential, is a stripped back version of the XM2W, a long awaited mouse that's due to be released some point of this year. It's had a few delays, and Game Gear haven't given an exact date. They're working on getting this mouse released but this is the one that we've got to play with for now. It's still packing some top quality hardware though. The sensor is the Pixar PAW3370, which offers a max CPI of 19,000. And notice how I said CPI rather than DPI. CPI or counts per inch is a more accurate way of measuring the tracking of a mouse. It basically counts the number of measurements over an inch reported by a sensor rather than basing the measurement on a preset amount of points over the same distance. Think of it as more like measuring what the mouse is actually reporting rather than attempting to reach a figure that it's attempting to reach. Anyway, with that small technicality out of the way, this sensor is also capable of tracking speeds of up to 400 IPS and handling acceleration of up to 50 G. They're kind of standard figures that are seen in a lot of mice and they're enough to handle fast flicks and sweeps. I've used this mouse to play my usual shooters at my usual amateurish level and it's performed great. To begin with I was worried about the very smooth coating, my initial impression was that it would be too slippy, but once I was in game and my hands were warmed up a bit, the mouse became quite stable and seemed to react to the heat and that kind of sweat on my hands. It's really clever, weird stuff. I've recently worked on finding a sensitivity setting that suits me rather than like copying the latest Twitch streamer that I've been watching, whoever, Shroud or whatever. And I've been trying to dial it in and get my own settings down. I settled on uh, a DPI of 1600 or CPI where this mouse is concerned. I'm a wrist aimer, so I don't really hit any big flicks that often. And this mouse, even though I feel it's been designed for like low sense gamers, it suited me really well. I haven't had any issues with it when playing shooters. The advertised battery life for this mouse, going off of Endgame Gear's website, isn't given in hours. It's a week. One whole week. Maybe they base that on gaming for two hours a day, or maybe they base it on a streamer gaming for eight hours a day. It's quite a variation. But all I know is, and all I can tell you, is that the battery life is good. Really good. In the short time that I've had with this mouse, since charging it to full when I first got it, I've managed to drain the battery to 55%, which can be seen in the configuration software we'll talk about in a minute. If I had to put a figure on the usage to reach that battery level, I'd say it's roughly 30 hours. The 410 milliamp hour battery found inside the XN2WE is impressive, and it's more than capable of lasting through days of long gaming sessions with ease. And what's more, you can use the XM2WE while it's on charge, as I alluded to when I mentioned that very clever cable design earlier. The connectivity options are either 2.4 GHz wireless or wired. The wireless side of things is handled by a CX52850 controller inside the mouse and a CX52650 controller inside the dongle. I've not had any issues with connection drops and the mouse has always woken from standby without any fuss. The mouse comes with a USB-A to C converter which can be placed on the end of the cable to allow the dongle to be placed as close by as possible and allow for a convenient way to grab the cable and disconnect the dongle when the battery's die and you need to charge it. The XM2WE configuration software, that's actually what it's called, that's such a cool name, is used to, you guessed it, configure the settings of the XM2WE and it's probably the simplest mouse software I've ever used. There are two tabs, one for the buttons and one for the performance. 
It's really easy to use. It's laid out in a very simple way and it just does what you need without any faff. You can reassign any key on the mouse to a variety of different actions. That includes the left click button, something which is usually locked down. The debounce time can be adjusted from zero to 30 milliseconds. Don't stick this too low though, as you run the risk of the mouse registering double clicks when you don't want it to. If you move over to the performance and sensitivity tab, you can customize four different levels of sensitivity, which can then be cycled through using the mode button found on the bottom of the mouse. Then finally, you can adjust the polling rate and the lift off distance, as well as enabling angle snapping and ripple control. Overall, this software, it just doesn't try to give you functionality that you don't want. It's supposed to configure a mouse and that's all it does. There are no sales pitches for other Endgame Gear products, no signups, no bloat. It's simple and it works, and I appreciate that. More, I want more companies, just make your software like that. Just make it do what it needs to do and stop trying to tack things on that are just useless. So then, looking back over this review, and I'm finding it really hard to pick a fault with this mouse. It's a very good mouse that I'd be more than happy to use as my daily driver. It's smooth and responsive, and the battery life is great. The shape may not be to everyone's tastes, but finding the perfect mouse shape for you is a very personal thing, which takes a lot of trial and error and sometimes a lot of money. The build quality on this thing is great. It's, it's rock solid. The XM2WE may end up staying on my desk for a good while after this review. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to KitGuru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. If you head down into the video's description, you'll find links to our merch store, our website, our Patreon page if you want to support us a bit further, and our Discord server, if I didn't already mention that. You'll find links to everything that you want to or need to, if you want to check any of them out. As always guys, I've been Matt, this has been the Endgame Gear XM2WE, a mouse that I really, really like. I'm going to use this one for a while. Look after yourselves, and I'll speak to you in the next one. See you later.